when real life becomes a reality show, how I deal with my narcissistic friends. And you guys have pictures of your exes on your phones. Here are the six reasons why you're supposed to delete them right now. Mm -hmm. That's all coming up next on the Hey Fresh podcast with Paul Wharton. Yay. All right, uh, Crystal City, you need to head there. They've got so many events happening, wine tastings to bike rides, art shows to beer gardens, street hockey to fashion shows, and so much more. There is always something going on in Crystal City. Offerings and live entertainment. If you want details, go to crystalcity.org. Also, Pacers, not only do they, do they have awesome running shoes and walking shows, shoes and great athleisure wear, but they also have a great podcast called Pace the Nation. If you want more details, just hit up their website. It's runpacers.org. Calm. Woo! Yeah. Ah. Uh, all, right. all right. All right. Here we go. What's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey, hey, phrase. What's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey, phrase. What's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey, phrase. What's the phrase that you hear? Tune in, yeah, you gotta tune in. Sarah Fraser on the mic, and she about to begin the co-host with the most born one looking fleek. Take it from me. You should be listening. Live from the nation's cap, pop culture has best. No need a second guess, separated from the rest. Now I finally know the words. <laughs> yes! Oh, hey, Fresh! Hey, Paul! <laughs> As I'm beginning to call it, you know, because in the new year, we're going to get swag. We're going to okay. get various swag stuff. Getting. I don't know, T-shirts, uh, food mood journal, right I up your alley. I don't know, whatever. How do you feel about fanny packs? You into fanny packs? Well, I have one that I wear. It's you Fendi. You do? It's a Fendi okay. fanny pack. Well, these wouldn't. They just have, like, our logo or faces <laughs> all over them. <laughs> you almost, like, threw up in your mouth. Oh what? What? I don't know what just Are happened. Are you okay? <laughs> Take a sip of water. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know why. I just wow. the idea of that. Okay. okay. Is that the reaction you were looking for? <laughs> no. I was looking at There's a friend of mine. He knows this guy. And he makes these fanny packs. And they have, like, all kinds of crazy designs on them. Like um, Mike and Ike's. Like, the whole fanny pack is all Mike and Ike's. Or it's all pineapples. And I'm like, that would be awesome. We could do Hey, Fraser and Paul Ward, <coughs> our entire logos. I love it. All over the fanny pack. With our would faces? you guys wear it? Yes. Oh, I love it. Do you think that's too They'd much? They'd wear it. Well, we'd wear it. We'd wear it. Or what else? Maybe we should just do, um, you know, you're known for what? Your champagne drinking? What are you known for? What's your signature? Your I hair? I don't really know. Yeah, probably my hair. Could we just do pictures of your hair? And what sure. am I known for? You're known for um, being the good time girl. Oh, okay. Great. Awesome. So I'll have my legs in the air, and then we'll have your hair. How about that? And we'll have this on a fanny pack. Would you guys rock this? Would you? Now, that sounds really interesting to me. Okay. I think that will be our fanny pack, if you guys want that. So, by the way, I have a new housekeeper named Priscilla. What? She's my new man. What happened to the other one? Well, Olga. What happened to Olga? Well, Olga wasn't available for all of my needs. <laughs> I have needs. I'm not needy, but I have needs. Is this housekeeper a live in or do they go home at night? She goes home at night, but this she comes. This is amazing. I'm five living days a week. for you. She comes five days a week. She comes all day. Five days a week? How she much does. of a mess could you make? You shower like 18 times a day. But there you go. Who's going to pick the towels up? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what it is? She's like a nanny. You know, not a male <laughs> nanny, but a nanny for a grown up man. Okay, okay, sure, sure. And see, this is the thing because the schedule is kind of crazy. So when I get home, she's ha she has dinner made. What? Oh my God, this sounds awesome. So even though I go out, I'm going out less at night because she asks me every day what I want for dinner. So I tell her what I want for dinner. Oh my God, I And love the it. bed is fresh and she irons my sheets and everything is fresh and the towels are laid out for my bath at night and everything. And in the morning when she comes, she puts on the coffee. And see, when I get home, she's not there so I can have privacy. Oh my God, I love it. You really are like a nicer version of Joan Crawford. <laughs> like it's just you and that maid like in this enormous place. It's not enormous, it's small. Okay, in this tiny place. And you know, he's <laughs> today Paul is like dressed in all black. He looks super sleek. You know, skin oh. is amazing, oh, flawless. Oh, no goodness. one can even guess your age. Is it 22? We don't even know. I love it. And he just looks perfectly put together. And this is all thanks to, what's her new name? Priscilla. Priscilla. Her name is Priscilla. And I love she, it. Oh she is God. so funny, but I'm going to tell you, she was folding t-shirts the other day, and she comes across <laughs> our t-shirt, and she's like, she comes running out like, oh my God, is that you? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, see, see, it's me. She's like, oh my goodness. She wanted to have it, but I act like I couldn't understand what she was saying. <laughs> I don't understand. Just second shelf. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Actually, we've got a fanny pack for you. These are Sarah's <laughs> legs spread in the air exactly. and Paul and my hair. Would you exactly. like that? Exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. We are totally getting our Christmas own line. Christmas bonus for the Manny. 
Christmas bonus for the Manny. We're doing our whole line of the things. Manny Fanny Pack. Oh my God, I think there's the, something there. The Manny Fanny Pack. I love fanny packs because yeah. I don't want to carry the big purses anymore. It hurts okay. your shoulders. It hurts your back. But you just snap on that fanny pack and you walk all over town. And keep it pushing. And keep it pushing. Crotch first, people. Crotch first. Oh, my God. And people will be like, what's on that? And then between my legs can be our logo. Okay. <laughs> I'm calling HR, actually. <laughs> okay, well, that would be me. <laughs> and when you call HR, sure. I answer. Yeah, exactly. And when, yeah, when I call, you answer. Oh, my God. You're right. How's it going? What's going on? Hey, it's going great, Sarah. I'm just so happy to be here with you. You know, my holiday special is coming up with Patti LaBelle. You guys, you have to be watching Christmas Day, Fox. But it's going to be on Fox Owen well, Owens all across the country, right? It will be on in different stations. I think Philly and, and maybe a few others. I'm not exactly sure where yet because we're still, like, working it out. But it will definitely be on in D.C., Maryland, oh and Virginia. I'll be DVR. Nine right? o'clock in the morning when you get up and you're ripping open those gifts, please have me on in the background. I will be at Patty LaBelle's <laughs> house, honey. Oh, people will be, and then you need to Instagram or Snapchat while you're opening your gifts with your family, and there's Paul Wharton and Patty LaBelle. I know. That would be so wonderful. Does, would the dream come true? By the way, does Patty talk about those pies? On the she does. Your special? She talks about her pies and how she learned how to make them because she says that she's not really a self-taught cook. She's more of a chubby. Now, that's her mother's. <laughs> her, no, no, wait. I know what you're going to say. That's her mother's nickname, chubby. Chubby, Aunt Hattie Mae, and Aunt Josh, they taught her how to cook. Really? And she learned the savory from her mom and dad, and she learned the sweet stuff from her aunts, Hattie Mae and Aunt Josh, and they taught her how to cook, and she tells all about that. So even the Walmart recipe is based on her mom's sweet potato pie recipe. Oh, my God. Have you ever had one of those? i got to try one. Hell, yeah. I had it at her house. She sent me home with, like, a stack of pies and puddings and cakes and all sorts of things. Oh, my God. Is that the outro of your show? I want to see that. No, the outro is my waist expanding, which is why I'm back at the gym now. Oh, my God. Oh, stop. Up. You're beautiful. You're oh, not really you're going. you're so sweet. You're not really going to the gym, are you? Oh, my God. I'm there. Yesterday, I was on the treadmill for almost two hours. What? Yeah. Doing what? Trying to run off all this shit I ate. Two hours? Oh, my God. I don't all even know what I would do. these fancy cakes and pies. Oh, my They're God. They're actually called fancy cakes. She's got a new line of fancy cakes at Walmart. Really? $14.98. Fourteen ninety eight. That seems high for Walmart. Well, it's a it's a fancy cake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what, what you Do I get my you? name on it? That's like pricey. I thought, I thought her pies are like three ninety nine. The pies are three ninety eight. When do they go on sale? But there's a there's a fancy cake which is like a big, nice, moist cake. Ooh, yum! By the way, by the way, speaking of uh, Walmart, um, <laughs> my book. I was like, actually that's kind of a. Well, I was looking. On, I don't even see you at a Walmart. I was looking at her site. Right now, I, where's the nearest Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's one in D.C. on like... Um, H Street. H Street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's actually pretty good. I did not think you knew there was like a Walmart in Wait, D.C. Wait, I've been there. Let me tell you something. I was sending Walmart money. You know you know what Walmart money is? No. Well, there's this, you know, it's like, it's like Western Union, but at Walmart. They call it Walmart <laughs> money. So I needed to send someone some Walmart money. And they were having a moment. And I said, oh, I'll go. Where do you want me to send it from? I said, if you can send it from Walmart. So I go into Walmart. <laughs> Little did I know, the moment I walk up there, and I have my friend Rob with me, okay? Okay. So I walk up to the register, and people are like, oh, my gosh, I think that's Paul Wharton. And the woman says, Wait a minute, are you Paul Wharton? I said, yeah, I told y'all. I told y'all that was him. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a line of, like, 20 people, okay? <laughs> they want selfies. People in line are looking, bobbing their necks. They want their fucking money. Like, it's Friday night. They want to go out. I'm trying to send this little bit of money. Girl, I had to take selfies with all the people. It was oh, so embarrassing. Oh my God! I it was love so it. embarrassing. You had like a step and repeat at Walmart. Like right. You had an event at Walmart. Right. I missed the Walmart money. I love that. <laughs> I haven't been to a Walmart in so long. The last time, and I'm not even joking when I tell you this story, and it's really gross. Do you want me to tell you this story? Yeah. It involves a man and a rascal who got up and had a massive skid mark, and I can't. Oh, even, like, no, I know I can't. Well, even. you know how I feel about skid marks. Oof. <laughs> he basically had kind of shard his pants in the Walmart, <laughs> and he was walking around like. Nothing else. This is in Maine. And I thought to myself, sir, sir, you've kept walking, even though you've shit yourself oh clearly. I was oh like, my God. I'm done. And then he humped right back in his rascal and drove around. Oh. And the worst part is he's going outside parking that and someone else is going in. I don't oh, know. God, that's terrible. God bless Patty. I love her, but I can't. After that, I God just. God bless Patty and Walmart because my book is actually going to be at Walmart. It is? Yes. Shut if you go on walmart.com right now, you can buy my book, Pulling It All Together. I take it back. Essential stuff. Style advice on being beautiful, confident, and most of all, happy. It comes out January 16th, but it will be in Walmart stores. 
yours. I am. So, I, I love it. And you know what? I shouldn't even say about the shitting man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's terrible. Because you could shit yourself at any store. It's you really not like could. Walmart, you really exactly. could. And I think that that book is like already marked down to thirteen dollars from twenty. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So you start with the markdowns. Okay. I'm good. Okay. I'm good with that. I mean, okay, whatever Walmart. you gotta do. Whatever. Uh, anyway, you guys, we want to thank you so much. The year is almost coming to an end. We absolutely adore you. And if you love this podcast, do us a favor. Um, we hopefully are always trying to give you holiday gifts and, and gifts throughout the year. But if you could subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, leave us a review. Hit five stars. Tell us what you love about the show. It would make a huge difference. Oh, God, um, yes. And spread the word. Our show is all about news of the week, our crazy lives, pop culture. And then we try to do interviews and things that make you think. You know, mm-hmm. that just make you kind of comfortable in the uncomfortable and sort of outside the box. And I love being out somewhere and just having a cocktail and then an email will pop up from a listener. Oh, I mean, I, I just, I love it. Actually, the last one I got, I read out loud to everybody that was sitting at the bar with me. It was such a great email. I mean, I'm yep. always, aren't you blown away? Like, mm-hmm. in this world where people are so busy and they have so many choices, I'm always so grateful for you guys listening because you take the time to write us the most amazing things. And, you know, something so heartfelt really just touches you. And that's what we always try to do is really share as much as we can about our lives. Absolutely. Which I actually have to share. Like, I'm feeling really guilty. Like, Dan has recently been the most amazing man. And I feel like at what point do I just need to marry this? guy hmm okay like is there a point where you've ever felt in a relationship like oh my god this person is such a good person like i just owe it to them but like, did he ask you already? No. Well, then, what the fuck you already <laughs> How do you know he wants to marry you? Because he, my mom always tells me, she's like, Dan is just waiting for you to be all in. And when you're all in, then he is totally ready. And I'm like, oh, my God. I feel like I'm all in. Like, I just need to marry him because he's been such a great guy. But then you should ask me next week because I might hate him. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. I would love to see you and Dan married. What kind of wedding would you have? Uh, I don't even know. A cheap one. Really? Yeah, probably a Walmart. Like, yeah? Uh, thirteen ninety nine, like that patty pie? That's done. <laughs> right. I don't know, because I, I can't justify the cost. Right. Doesn't that seem crazy to you? I was I mean, talking more man. about the love. Oh. I mean, and the, <laughs> and the feeling and the friends surrounding you, holding hands, holding up candles, you know, I crying, wishing you well. You're like, cheap. <laughs> <laughs> the one on a discount. <laughs> the one at a free venue. We're going to have to advertise their venue on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Now, you're right. I need to get more into the spirit because that is the truth. Like, I think a lot of people are, like, meaning family, I think, are excited for Dan and me to eventually someday get married. And I think when we do, they really want us to have an occasion to celebrate our love because Mm -hmm. we've been together a long time. We've been through our highs and lows. We've broken up, gotten back together. Uh, You know, I've sort of, like, made out with other people at times Mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we got back together. So Mm -hmm. it was like, um, you know, we've been through a lot. Sure. And by the way, I would share it all, but Dan is very private. He doesn't want me to spill the beans. And that's why I have completely, I don't disclose a lot about him. No, this, I get it. And I've banned him from listening. Oh, that's fantastic. I know. It's been working out great, hasn't it? Like the it's past couple of months. It's great. It's so carefree in here. We don't even hear here. from Dan. Yeah. We used to have to stop, pause, edit things. I mean, that was too much stress for me. <laughs> I know. You know? He's just been so good lately. I feel like, oh, God. I don't know. I love it. What's happening in the news? We have so many stories to get to. Yes. First of all, this is the number one rising religion in the United States. So Mm -hmm. I want to hear if you know anyone that's ever participated in this religion, how we get involved, because I really think that you and I should go to a ceremony and record it. Also, do you have any pictures of your exes on your phones? On your phone? I know you have like one phone, but do you keep ex pictures of your ex? Hmm. I mean, buried in there somewhere, probably. Yeah. (laughs) Really? Probably. Okay, well, this list I thought was super fascinating, and it's the six reasons you should absolutely delete all of your photos of your ex, and I want to see if you you agree with that story or not. And then the other one is, and I thought this was great because we always like to get deep on here, would you ever classify either one of your parents as narcissists? Mm -hmm. Mm, Yes, actually. Really? (laughs) Maybe a little bit. (laughs) Maybe a little bit. Okay, well, this article really struck me, and it's how to break up with a narcissistic parent. Mm. And when I read this, I was actually surprised how I don't want to break up, though. Right, right, right. You obviously, you figured out, you have a great relationship with your parents. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you completely have set all that, like, into motion your own way. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't Mm -hmm. you think you created the boundaries for them? Yeah. Well, for one thing, you know, as you know, I used to take my mom everywhere with me. 
Yeah, yeah, it was like, okay, we're going to hire Paul Wharton to host this event, and his mom was coming. You know, and I did that for many years because I felt a bit of guilt about going out and getting dressed up in a tuxedo and having this fabulous life. And I thought, well, I really want to share this with my mom. Right. And then, you know, over the years, I would kind of realize if I missed an event and she heard about it, she would be salty with me. Right. And I thought, wait a minute, there's something off about this because this is only good as the last event I took you to. Right. You know, I mean, the love was certainly still there. The love is overflowing, but the pettiness came into play. Right. You know, so I just decided that I wouldn't set the expectation that I'm taking her to every event and we should go back to being mom and son and some things we do together and we share. But normally, adults that go through their lives aren't always taking their moms everywhere with them. Right, right. You, know? yeah, you need that space. Yeah, so she's... I got okay with that. And and she kind of and she had to she <laughs> she had she no had choice. To. All right, so we'll get into that story. Um, but one of the first ones I thought this was fascinating, and I want to know your thoughts on this. But more uh, gas stations, public gas stations, and public restrooms across the country are thinking of installing blue lights in the bathroom to combat drug use. Ooh. I wanted to see if you thought this was a good idea. What's a blue light? A blue light is. Have you ever gone to a nightclub? You know how like a blue light um, highlights like all the dust and oh, stuff like on okay. a bed, or you go in and it's it's like. Like everything looks purple, kind okay. of, and and you anything fluorescent like really pops. Got it. Mm-hmm. Well, more gas stations in America because of the opioid epidemic are now putting these blue lights in the uh, restrooms to make it harder for addicts to find a vein. Ooh. I know. I think this is like. I don't know. Isn't this a public safety hazard for everybody else? According to people who have experienced these bathrooms, many have popped up in Pennsylvania. It's a little jarring at first. You go into a bathroom, you expect it to be well lit. Uh, But according to some people who have experienced this, it's kind of dark and it takes a while for you to adjust. The light system is designed to help customers and employees avoid dangerous situations by walking in on people who are doing drugs. I heard some people think it's rather creepy and daunting going in there. Uh, said one person, but I don't think it's the case. If it's helping the drug drug epidemic going on, then I think it's a good idea. It's currently happening in Pennsylvania, but could spread across the country as they're trying this new thing. God, people are shooting up in the bathroom in a public place. Does that surprise you, though? That doesn't really surprise me, but I, I just thought to myself, like, I don't know, don't, shouldn't we be finding, like, instead of I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you can. I, I know there's many, many resources and ways to help treat, you know, help somebody that's in addiction. But I'm just thinking to myself, like, really, everybody else has to like be in this blue light, and isn't this dim lit scenario dangerous for everyone else? Like, I don't know. Maybe we could just have a counselor in the bathroom. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. About that. <laughs> I don't know about that. But you're saying the money yeah. that you're spending to install these blue lights is that really going to help? That's my thing. Well, there's obviously a need, and there's it's obviously an epidemic if they have to, you know, even consider doing this, you know. So we have to put our ourselves in the mind of those people living in those towns. Right. <laughs> That's not and very I feel like Downton Abbey of you. You're like I in feel, those towns. I feel for them. If, but don't bring the blue lights here. Is that what no, you're right. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I need well lit. I <laughs> yeah, no. Lighting. I need to see what's going on. Hey, I mean you seem to work really well with women, but uh, there's a new study out that talks about men and women, and they say that they're more different than they are similar. In a survey, men said that they felt pressure to be financially successful and engage in locker room talk, while women felt pressure to be involved, mothers, and attractive. Hmm. Uh, do you think that's true for guys? I'm somewhere in between. P research. Not the mother part, but, you know, keep my skin up and <laughs> make cash. I mean, you know so what I mean? Keep my pressure. skin up and keep the lights on. I mean, basically, is is the thing. You know, it's interesting because I used to like to go, um, like, when they would come to, like, a party, and there would be, like, girls on one side and guys on the other, and then I would like to hang out with the girls. Right. But as I've gotten older, I now like to hang out with the guys. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm not one of the guys. So, like, at the big holiday party, you know, the big Christmas party or Thanksgiving, yeah. and the guys are all watching, um, you know, football, and the women are in the kitchen. I'm like, wait a minute, don't ask me to do the dishes. I'm going with the guys. Oh, I like that, though. You know, because they used to put me to work in the kitchen while all the other guys would go. and Be watching football, hanging out, locker room. Do you now, like, feel pressure to engage in locker room talk now that you're Oh, I can give as well as I get. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I got a potty mouth on me. Oh, I can can keep up now. (laughs) 
<laughs> I may not know how the game is played, but you uh, know. the good news is though is that uh, beliefs about at least equality at work are changing. Sixty three percent of respondents said men and women excelled at the same things at work, while thirty seven percent said they were good at different things. The survey results also shed light on some root causes of sexual harassment and discrimination. Nearly half of men, fifty seven percent of men ages eighteen to thirty six, said they felt pressure to join in with other men who talked about women in a sexual way. I could see that. Sexism was described as widespread and baked in from a young age. That's kind of interesting. So, well, I guess you hear your father, right? I guess. Or, I mean, my dad was always so respectful. Was your? Yeah. I oh, sure mine. Was, oh, absolutely. I can't imagine them. I don't think I ever even saw my dad really talk any locker room talk. Really? Yeah. I don't really think that there is such a thing. I mean, I mean, I know. Here I mean, you know. know B- before the president, do you know what I mean? Before, oh, let's just locker room talk. When you've been in a locker room, <laughs> you know, let's Never. just start with that. Okay. I know. Um, I'm trying to think if I really, I, you know, I have to work at not caring about my appearance. Although you probably would say that I, I don't, I don't really care. I think you, you're always very well put together. Well, that's because I just pay somebody to help me do it. I don't right. really. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of, I'm sure I fall victim to that. Like, do I worry about being attractive? But I don't know. I feel like I played that game for a long time, and then you realize that even when you think you're at your hottest, someone's always dumping you, someone's always leaving you, someone's always having sex with you and never calling you again. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. You're never exempt, no matter how good-looking you are. But, you know, I can't think of a single person that I do anything that I do for myself for. You know, like I'm always working on my skin and at night, like I enjoy my little rituals. And as that man in L.A. said to me that time, go on with your creams and potions, (laughs) put your creams and potions on. I was like, "Uh uh-huh. What's the problem? (laughs) Like, I still can't get, when is the disc start? (laughs) Right. Yeah. Creams and potions. Sure. In fact, I'm going to trademark that shit and make some money off your ass. (laughs) Creams and potions. Yes. So in the evening, you know, I do my exfoliants, my creams and my potions and my masks and different things like that. And I just enjoy it. I I used to do more stuff, I think, for other people, you know, trying Mm -hmm. to be attractive. But I, you know, look, I wasn't exempt from any. This is what I tell women and men. It's like in one of my favorite books to read is Women, Food and God, because it's basically all about about how, 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 how appearance is very, you know, your looks are very like it doesn't mean anything like you can be hot and yeah sure you might be getting some breaks at times in your life but in the end if you're not talented if you're not good at what you do if and just life circumstances you're still going to be fired you're still going to be someone's still going to cheat on you something you know shit's going to happen you're never exempt so it's just made me realize like okay sure if i feel like looking good for me great but I no longer strive to be like, oh, am I desirable to people? You I know? think that that's very refreshing. I, it's very liberating. It is liberating. You don't have all this, um, you know, I never stress about like, oh, boy, I should really work out to look good. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. Well, How because can I when you do this? it for someone else, you know, in my experience, seeing other people in relationships, that person most of the time cheats on you. I mean, yeah. you know, when when someone knows that you are completely wrapped up in them and everything that you do for yourself is really about them, yes. they take it for granted. I agree with you. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about this? So these these are the reasons that you... I was trying to actually go through my phone. I, I don't have any pictures of my ex on my phone. I mean, you have to if they're on Facebook or something like that. I mean... What do you mean on your phone? That's your screensaver? I mean, what are you talking about? Like about? saved in pictures. Do you have like, how many saved photos do you pictures. have? Like oh, in your uh, pictures segment, like under photos, under photos, right? So I'm trying to see if I can, let me, see. Um, let me scroll to the bottom. Okay. I have, all right. Don't ask me why, but I have 4,300 photos. Okay. Okay. You have 4,300 saved in which one? In my, I think it's cl- my cloud. Is it all photos? Camera. Photos and 66 videos. Okay. And I actually <laughs> Look how many do I have. have how many do you have? 640,000? <laughs> what? What? You are, are you kidding? I thought 4,000 was a lot. 40,000? Oh my God. 40,800. Uh, 40,483 photos, 3,472 videos. I die. Are you kidding? Is that too many? Oh my God. Paul, I don't even know a phone could handle that. What the hell kind of storage level do you have? Oh. I always Max. tell them the most. Just give me the most. Give me the most. Give me the most. I was going to pull up. I think the only thing I have is my old engagement ring. 
from my ex-boyfriend, but I don't think I have a picture of him on here. Yeah, I couldn't find one. I mean, I wouldn't be able to find one. Well, here's why a uh, relationship therapist says that you should always delete pictures of your ex from your phone. Starting at your photos, staring at your photos might make you forget why you broke up with the person in the first place. According to Dr. Fox, um, keeping tabs on an ex on social media led to greater current distress over the breakup. More negative feelings, more sexual desire, more longing for the ex-partner. You believe that? Uh, 100%. Okay. I could every s- fiber of my being, every time I've tried to resuscitate a relationship or going back out with someone that I dated before, actually someone that I dated just texted me just now. Really? Yeah. And it's like, you know, I saw this guy at this party the other day and I, used to, I dated him for a minute and he was total, he was great the first minute. And then the second minute he was a total loser. And, uh, you know, I always romanticize what really happened in the relationship. Right. And then I go back and then, of course, you know, you go through the motions and I always say, like, you have a cocktail and you're like, oh, my God, why didn't this work out? It must have been me. Well, I'm going to really try. And then your appetizer comes and then they do something that annoys you. They talk down to the waiter. And then, you know, by the time you finish your main course, you're like separate checks. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I already called my Uber like 10 minutes ago. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. You remember. Um, Number two, it forces you to remember how much everyone else loved you as a couple too I guess that one could go either way I mean I'm sure you've Hmm. gone out with people I mean I have where my friends are like why are you going out with that person Um, so they say yes sometimes uh, if you guys were great together for a while lots of people end up reminiscing also about what you guys were like together that ends up causing a stress and making you feel guilty Hmm. Um, I don't know do you feel that pressure no I don't feel any pressure (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Future partners might feel like you're still into your ex. Have you ever gone out with someone and then they've got pictures of their ex around? I have, and it was creepy. Like, the guy still had pictures of, you know, granted, I don't know, maybe you think this is acceptable. I went out with this guy, because remember when I used to date older men? Yeah. You know, and before I had my 10-5 rule? Okay. 10 years older, 5 years younger, that's you my max. You would number rules. You are too I'm funny. telling you. Everybody okay. gets divorced. If you marry an old man, it's very tough. Okay. Um, but anyhow, so I used to go out with this old guy. He was divorced. He had two kids. And he had pictures of he and his ex-wife and the kids all around the house. Is that bizarre? Mm. Or do you think where they had kids, it's okay? No. I don't think that the ex-wife should be in the pictures all around the house. Like framed pictures? Framed photos. No. He's holding on to the past. I totally agree. Uh, And number four, it makes it too easy to creep on other aspects of your ex's life. So if you have a picture in your phone of your ex, suddenly you start looking at that, and then you're on Facebook, then you're on Instagram, and you're kind of stalking them. That I agree with 100%. I have done it, even though I don't want to admit to it, but I've done it. Oh, my God. Me too. Yeah. I'm trying to think of um, who did I recently stalk? My old high school boyfriend. And oh. but what are you really Made looking for thrilled. when you stalk? That's the thing. I mean, when you look through it, I mean, do, is there some sort of satisfaction that comes from knowing that they're not, they don't look that happy? <laughs> um, <laughs> I yeah. Mean, really. I mean, honestly, for being honest, right? You you don't really want to see your ex thriving. You're just like, right. you know. I just wonder. What I want to do is call my exes, like, because I look at them and I think, oh my god, thank God it <laughs> ended. Do they look at me the same way? Or are they like? That bitch, he's got right. way too much going on. I would, I would love to know what they what they too. thought about that. Is anybody still mad at you? Do you think any of them are still mad at well, you? Well, the only one I can think of is Ed. You know, the one that asked me to marry him. Mm-hmm. And when in my radio days, everyone used to call him Old Man Ed because he was like 14 years older than me. Mm. He got married. He lives in Florida. I mean, he'd be the only one. It'd be kind of fun. I could actually email him and see if he'd be on the show. Wow. And see if he has any. I don't know though. It's been a long time since we've talked. Like. Six years, five years. You know, I dated this French um, furniture designer. His oh. name was Paul Mathieu. 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 And it's a, he's like a famous furniture designer. And we had this great thing going on in New York. This is years and years ago. And I have another friend that's an opera singer in New York named Mary Claire Giraud. Um, oh, I love these <laughs> names. Right. So it turns out that Mary Claire Giraud, as I'm seeing on her Instagram, is best friends with Paul Matthews' like new boyfriend, which is his like lifetime companion. Oh wow! And I find myself looking through their pictures. I mean, not that I think ever think about Paul Matthew, like you know, thing right. of the past. But it's it's interesting how those lives like collided because we used to be, I used to be really great friends with Mary Claire Giraud. And now she's hanging out with Paul Matthews' boyfriend, and he's so supportive of his boyfriend, who was a singer, and who's like performing at Joe's Pub in New York, and has shows in Paris, and all this. And Paul Matthews always like you know promoting this guy. So I'm thinking, wow, maybe because I kind of left Paul Matthew, 
Ah, got it. You know, I'm like, you're boring. I gotta live. I'm free. I gotta be free. I'm on MTV. Fuck this. I'm on you know what I mean? I was in one of those moments. Sure, I don't blame you. But I'm like, wow, he seems so loving and he's supporting this guy and he's always pushing him to be better. Yeah. Does it make you have like any regrets? Well, him? not, I don't have any regret. I don't have regrets. No. But it does make me think sometimes, at this point in my life, I would have probably made a different decision because the way he supports and loves and promotes his partner is very attractive to me. Right. Like you want somebody that's all about promoting you, like like that has your back. That's always about that's right. And I would promote the shit out of them, too. Right, right, right. You would do that for them. You yeah. really need a Dan because Dan doesn't want to be in the spotlight and he would just focus on you. Wow. I mean, Dan is like Priscilla. Is that the maid? Yeah. Olga, like all of those combined. <laughs> and Carla. And and Carla. Carla and then the one from before. who's this Jean Malmato? The which one? And who's the furniture guy? A uh, Paul Matthew. <laughs> 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 yeah, whatever that guy yeah okay okay anyway number five on the list if your ex is a remotely kind human they'll understand why you need it to do it so mm. uh if your ex is capable of basic empathy they won't um prioritize the optics of your past relationship over your emotional needs have a can have a conversation about it maybe it's better to defriend each other or stop following each other altogether. so essentially this is saying you should even ask them to unfollow you so none of your stuff comes up. Gosh, that's, that's like but so whoever strong. does it first, I mean, that's like sending a major signal. Well, they're saying have a heart to heart. Like if the person that you're dating, it has any empathy and like you guys are all um, understanding of each other in the breakup, they're saying, hey, maybe you two should talk about mutually deciding not to follow each other. That's mm -mm. like so strong. I would still suck. I don't want to be trying to reach out and ask and in the process of that, like they go and click unfriend and then I'm like, wow. Like, that's too much for me to take. What'd you do? No, I can't take it. I need to be the one to do that. Uh, lastly on the list, there's no good reason not to. If you think you might want to look at the photos again someday, you can always save them on a hard drive, but you don't need them on your day-to-day -day photos. Well, I In agree with Paul that. Wins. I don't want to look at my ex every day. 40,000 photos that no. he has on his phone. <laughs> what the... Sure, um, speaking sure. of that, am I not? Am I? Am I going crazy here? Am I the only one that is obsessed with watching my Instagram story? I realized this recently. Watching your own? Yes. Well, if I've mine's become... funny. I watch it. You <laughs> will. If it's funny. I know, but lots of times when our interns, like when they do Wednesday show, lots of times they'll they'll Instagram or Snapchat our mm -hmm, story, mm -hmm. and I'm really obsessed when someone else Instagram or Snapchats our story. Is this the sign of a complete narcissist? It's pretty, well, I mean, you have to be a bit of a narcissist in this business, right? Anyway, right? Right. Yes. Well, that's why I really it, it's really refreshing to me with you. Um, for oh, one thing, I how admit we all the time how know how we celebrate each other. Because oh. I know a lot of people that yeah. even our partners in, you know, whether they're in television or radio or whatever, you know, they're like low-key hating on the other one. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, you and I know a lot of people oh, that yeah. low-key hate on us and others. And, yeah. I'm like, I want your ass to be big so you can take me with <laughs> Me, too. I'm like, go to L.A. What do you need? You need, me to, you need lunch money? What do you need? Yeah. <laughs> me, too. I'm like, when does that development do? Okay, what are you guys working on? <laughs> right, exactly. How soon are we going to be on TV One? Let's go. Exactly. But you know what? Yeah. I mean, and I think you and I have lived through similar experiences. Mm -hmm. The I couldn't do that if I wasn't truly living like my own path and yeah. dream you know what i'm saying I do. like i worked for the man for a long time for me that was just not the right path especially now in media because as so many options are, are out there for media i think big companies get very fearful so then they really kind of clamp down on image and employees and try to sort of suck and squeeze everybody to sure. one mold mm -hmm. so if I were still doing that, like if I were still working radio, I don't think I would I would wish you well. I would think I'd be very bitter because I'd be thinking to myself, there's a guy who makes it happen mm -hmm. without, you know, he makes his own schedule, he's on TV, he's doing his specials, while I have to ask my boss every two seconds if I can go pee. Right. You know, I mean, Oof. yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't I think. Don't I know it? <laughs> don't I know it? And, it? and it's interesting. I mean, the other day I had an experience with some people that I work with. And we were announcing this, you know, special or whatever. And I was just a little surprised to see, like, no one had a reaction. Like, yeah. you know, if you told me, okay, it's like, who's your Patty LaBelle? 
Um, I would say, oh my God, I, I was thinking about this because I've been making like a wish list of people I want to interview by the mm-hmm. time I'm 40. Um, I would say Sandra Bullock or Howard Stern. Okay. I'm like obsessed with both. Both have been huge idols. I can totally see that. I mean, I adore Sandra Bullock. I think there's no woman today that lives with like as much class. And I think she has such a great career. She doesn't have to be on social media. She doesn't have to do any publicity, nothing. People still watch her movies. Sure. People still think she's incredible. And she's mastered the art of giving the audience some of her personal life, sure. but then holding a lot back. And exactly. that's almost impossible that celebrities do that. So today. imagine this. Uh, imagine on the most special day of the year where, you know, dreams come true. Christmas Day. Oh my God. You know, you get to go and not only have Sandra Bullock come to the studio where you are, but you go to her home. Die. Okay. And to do a special with her and share in this special day in this special moment. Imagine you tell that story and I'm just like checking my email, <laughs> picking my nails, you know, like I anybody mean, got a file, I got a hangnail. It's really do you know, I mean really, yeah. it's kinda like, uh okay. You know, your silence is saying a lot. So, you know, but you just kinda have to understand it and keep it moving. I try to, I don't know about you, but I only celebrate now. Like I'm very conscious of, because I I feel like what you and I are doing is a real gift and it's very, very hard. And I, I always try to recognize that in people. It is very hard to leave a safe job, a paycheck and to blaze your own trail. Believe me. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I started this podcast, I mean, I had moments where I'd sit in bed because, you know, I, I left a $195,000 job. I'd yeah. be like, oh, what did I do? What did I do? And mm-hmm. I didn't have a mortgage or kids, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So I always try to be very empathetic of people when I'm sharing with them any, and it's the same thing. You know, when I went to LA, you and a couple other people, very few people really want to know because it's, I think, very hard for people. They see people living how they wanted Hello. to. Hello. Uh oh, we just had a Oprah aha moment up in here. Hold on. They really do. Come on. I honestly, I try. Come on, (laughs) Grace. No, my hands are straight up in the air, people. I'm just like, she is preaching today. Go ahead. Pray. Why are they mad? Uh, No, really. It, but I try not to, and I never like, you know, obviously we share our personal lives on this mm-hmm. podcast to hopefully make other people go, hey, you know what? I have those same issues or I can share, you know, if these guys can do it, I can do it. But I try to be very careful now about any successes and things that I share because I don't, I know what my destiny is, but that is very hard for other people to live. Sure. And, it, and everybody in our lives, and I've had it everybody in my life from my radio age from everyone has told me you're crazy what are you doing why would you give up this money why would you do this so i can understand then when people see what you're doing for them they had hopes and dreams of a different type of career that didn't happen i get it i get it completely but i think most of the people that listen to this you know although they do say that some of your haters do like listen to kind of keep tabs yeah um, but I think that most of the people that listen to this and are part of our community, I mean, I think that one thing I love about doing this is that they are very supportive. Right. You know, and we do have different points of view sometimes. And I love when people write in and they say, well, I didn't really agree with you on that. Or this really touched me and you made me feel great here because that's the whole point of this. Like in right. our oversharing, because I know how to undershare. I just won't say shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that. easy. I'll never offend you because I just won't say anything. Yeah, we totally know you that. You know, one. I totally know that. So yeah. this exercise in, in the overshare isn't to like be like, ha ha, look at me, all these crazy stories I tell. It's it's to really authentically say, well, you know, I, I don't want to be vulgar, but I'm pretty much going to share it all. Yeah. That, that's what I've committed to do in the hopes that it connects with other people. And that's the vulnerability. That's not always the glossy shit and having Priscilla fold the laundry. That right. is like you know, the, the, the Michael stuff and the, you know, the disappointments as a child and the, and the bullying and, and, you know, really, you know, the, the whole life is the full circle. It totally is. Mm -hmm. It totally is. So, no, that's good. And I I know people that listen to this podcast root for both of us and, you know, vice versa. Anytime we can ever help listeners, we're always striving to do that. Absolutely. Um, A couple other stories I wanted to get to. So, you know, anybody that practices um, witchcraft, because apparently that is now the um, one of the most popular and rising religions among young people under the age of 35. uh, Modern day witchcraft is becoming more and more prevalent as more people believe in essentially not saying prayers anymore, but conducting 
spells, which kind of act the same way. You think there's any truth? Well, I've been a part of a jism sism. A what? A jism sism. What is a jism sism? You know, an exorcism where jism comes out. What? what? No, you have not. No. It's called a circle jerk, Sarah. What? what? God, uh, you're so what? immature. <laughs> you don't know anything. You did not. What? Why did you participate in this? A jism sism. But okay, so you but it, but a circle jerk isn't like a form of witchcraft. Yeah, that's the closest I've ever been. <laughs> okay, because you were in a circle. That's it. And you were yeah. That must be awkward though. I've always wondered about a circle jerk. Like they really happen. But don't people like come at different times? Well, that's the thing. It's like you got to try to sync up. That's gonna be really hard. Yeah. Do you look people in the eye when you're doing this? I or are you like... really have never done it, but I just want oh, to. Yeah. I mean, I really want to be a part of that movement, but. I'm just not that cool. Oh my god, I would have so many questions. I'm just and not then that that's cool. the thing is like, do you have a penis in each hand? And then what if you get a really small one? I no, don't I really think big everybody does their own, like, right? Or oh. you could do like like that song, slide to the left, <laughs> slide to the right, crisscross. You know that crisscross. Everybody <laughs> clap your hands. <laughs> Now that's what I call a jism system. Yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> oh, my God. Please tell me somebody listening to this is practicing witchcraft and is recognized at a Wiccan church. We want to come. Uh, this form of religion, if you will, is now being recognized by more states, and it has a growing foundation, mm, okay. according to a new poll. Yes, I want to come. You do? Uh, well, <laughs> You also want to fuck a ghost, so <laughs> I guess it all makes sense, right? <laughs> uh, people say that it's unlike pop culture portrayal. Members say witchcraft is actually grounded in love and spirituality. The green um, the green skin came from the fact that women who claimed to be witches were abs- abused and their faces were bruised. That's kind of where this image of witches comes from, mm-hmm. that, a witch with green face. They say magic is simply the belief that you can make anything happen. It's kind of like a prayer, according to Lisa, who is one member of a Wiccan church. There's no devil worship. See, that was my thing. I kind of felt like, oh, is there devil worship? Because I'm not sure I'm down with that. Uh, there is not that. Only a love for the goddess of creation and inspiration. Oh, okay. we got to go. we got to go? I think this would be amazing All to right. try. I mean, yeah. I'm down. You Absolutely. know, I'll try anything once. All right. Well, look, if you're into any sort of witchcraft or you're a Wiccan, will you email us, Sarah at HayFrage.com, Paul Wharton style at Yahoo.com? Because we'd love to come. Okay. I think it'd be cool to experience. That'd be fun. Uh, Mervis Diamonds, we love working with them. That's right. Mervis is a sponsor of ours. You can always go to MervisDiamond.com if you're in the market for an engagement ring, wedding band. Uh, maybe you just want to buy yourself a congrats, a big girl gift, a big boy gift. You know? I love it. You know? uh, but anyway, we just saw Jonathan Mervis, Mervis recently, and he told us about a great love story that we wanted to share with you. So take a listen to this. So um, I want to tell you a, uh, a story that I always thought was my favorite of all the stories. I hear a lot of stories of people coming in telling me how they met and, you know. So this one couple said that they lived in the same neighborhood um, and every day would see each other on the platform of the metro in Boston. Outside mm-hmm. the, so for any of the listeners out there near Boston, get to that metro yeah, what station. Is that? What color is that? It's orange, silver. So these two people did not know each other. Um, and this is a girl telling me the story. Um, and they didn't know each other, but they saw each other every day at the same time. You know, they were on the same schedule at the same platform. Okay. And they got on. They, to be. they sat at the same whatever part of the train and they never talked to each other. They both had their headphones in. They did. I look at their iPhones, whatever. Every day, and this went on for what they said is forever. Like it just was always the case. Exactly. Yeah. They were, you know, that was that was their relationship. You know, mm-hmm. I yeah. guess you can't get in fights if you don't talk. Right. So, right. so uh, one day, um, the guy is waiting on the platform, and the girl is not there. And the train comes, and she's running late or whatever. She's not there, and she's running towards the train and sees him not get on the train, mm. and literally. She said she walked over to him, yanked the eye, the ear fo- ear pods. What do you call them? Earbuds. Earbuds yeah. out yeah. of his ears. Yeah. And it was like, like, all right, we're, we're going to start talking about this. Like, why didn't you get on the train? I know you're waiting for me. Yeah. Um, and he was all shy and like <laughs> flustered. And she's like, I know you were waiting for me. We look at each other all the time. And like, she just yeah. like, right, was like, listen, I'm into you. You're into me. Like, yeah. And they started dating, and they wow. got engaged like very shortly after. Oh, that is awesome. And they, how did they meet? So I saw them here on a fateful day. They were here looking at Viraggio rings. Told you their 
love story. And I will show you the original video that I recorded of them telling me the story. Oh my and my God. iPhone, like, one and a half. <laughs> it's, like, terrible quality and it's all pixelated. <laughs> Um, so there's hope. I told you I have to be riding the Metro. <laughs> it's such an, I love oh it. My the God. magic of Mervis. It was the Metro brought them together, but I love the story because it was the girl who said, yeah. enough is enough. Yeah, really. Come like, on now. There's something here. And sure. She made the first move, effectively. Love it. Yeah. Um, so we were talking a little bit about narcissistic parents, how to break up with a narcissistic parent. I bet a lot of people listening have to deal with this. And I, I feel really bad because I, um, I have a couple of girlfriends that have real narcissistic parents, and it's just so – it's just sad. And it really puts you in a position where you have to – I don't know. You have to be the adult, and I think that's really hard for kids at all ages. But um, if your parent is a narcissist, which basically means that any time there's a fight, there's a disagreement, everything becomes about them. Okay. All about them. So if you if you constantly butt heads with your parents, and then it's about their feelings, and never really anybody else or the family as a whole unit, you probably have a narcissistic parent. Here are some of the things. Recognize that your health and well-being must come first. Growing up, may have been uh, you may have been quick to try to please your parents, like so many of us are when we're younger. But as you grow older, you need to realize that their feelings are secondary to your own health. Do you think you can do that, Paul, as a as an adult with your parents? That's hard. Mm. I mean, thankfully, I mean, I'm I'm super close with my mom, and she never puts me in that position at all. You know, we're we're like best friends now, but. Um, I can imagine it'd be very difficult. The only thing that I have going on with my mom that kind of is recurring that borders on narcissism is <laughs> like she'll say, you know, something will be going on. I told you. Remember when I said, actually, I don't. I don't <laughs> remember you t- saying not to do that. You know, it's like there's always that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I mean, you know, we have a great time. I have narcissism issues with other members of my family, like my. My dad's brother, David, you know, my gay uncle right. in New York that strangled me. Yes. So, you know, he's the type that you're telling him a story. Uncle David, I just really wanted to talk to you about this. It was really deep. Well, what happened was, hold your point. Yeah. Spirit told me to tell you a story. And then he launches into this whole story for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. And you never get back to your point. Oh, my God. 30, 40 minutes? You're... you're uh. Every time... You can't even talk to him. So really, when he calls, I mean, it's just about, okay, do I want his once a year, twice a year, do I want to get into this with Uncle David and just have this long conversation? Because all he wants to talk about is himself. <laughs> once or twice a year. Yeah, I don't think like that, that in my do. life. Uh, learn to detach and create boundaries to truly disengage and forge an identity outside your parent's shadow. You'll need mm-hmm. to learn to detach, which essentially means not reaching to things said or done by the narcissist. To that end, create healthy boundaries, like limiting your communication to short phone calls or an email. That's amazing. Yeah. God, it must be hard, though. It must be so difficult. I'd be fascinated to hear people's stories if you just communicate with your parents via email. Like, well, that's so hard. You know, because you used to work for the man, and now you kind of do your own thing, and you're here, and you're there. Like, has your mom's expectation of the time you should spend on the phone with her changed? No, but she does. Um, it, she doesn't really want phone calls. She wants me there. So, you know, that's why, like, you were talking to me. You're like, girl, you travel all the time. And I'm like, I know. Because I sort of, a couple, probably like six or eight months ago, I just went through this, like, really stressful period. I was just, like, super overwhelmed, working too much. And my mom was like, you need to come to Maine. Like, that's always her solution. My mom says the same thing, yeah. Yeah, you need to come Mm -hmm. home. Come home. I really love it. And I've really realized over the years, like, you know, I've tried to find, um, like, you have a very relaxing routine. You'll go home. You don't answer your phone. You'll take a bath. Mm -hmm. When I'm in D.C. or in a city, I'm just like on. I feel like I have to work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when I go to Maine, I feel like that truly is my meditation. Because I turn the phone off. You can't really get any cell phone reception. And in Maine, nobody cares about your social media numbers. They don't give it. Nobody watches YouTube. No (laughs) one knows a shit thing about it. It's like, oh, yeah, what are you doing these days? No one follows. Okay. So you become very humble very quickly and it's like they don't care they're raising their kids trying to put food on the table you're going to the sure. beach you're climbing Taking a mountain back, having a few beers exactly mm-hmm. so i try to go to maine as every couple months to really keep recharged but with my mom i would say the only pressure she puts me under is like enough time is never enough you okay. know what i mean no i get it I like get she it always wants me there yeah my mom like if i if i take the call from her i'm always you know i have this thing like a lot of people do is our parents are getting a little older my parents aren't old but they're just getting older 
And, you know, when she calls, I want to answer the phone, even if I'm not really available. Right, because you want to make sure everything's okay. Hey, everything's okay? Yeah. Okay, good. If I have to get out the phone, yes, I need to talk to you right away. I'm like, okay, I've got to go. <laughs> you know, I need to go. Or if I'm on the phone with my mom and somebody else calls in and I click over, like, I'm like, oh, I need to take a click. She'll hang up on me. Right. She does not want me. Like, call waiting is, like, the enemy. Right. Do you know, right, so right, little right. things like that. But, you know, I have my little moments where I sit and talk to her and I say, look, you could have it two ways. I can go, you know, work a nine to five job for somebody you never hear from me. Yes. You know, from eight to six. Or, you know, occasionally you can touch in with me when I can. I'll call you back. But I just can't stay on the phone for a half hour. Right, right, you know? right. I know, I know, and it, I totally get that. Uh, number three on the list is how to break up with a narcissistic parent is try not to be confrontational, but do set boundaries. Confronting a narcissist with a laundry list of their parenting mistakes isn't likely to go over well. Narcissists are notoriously bad at taking criticism. It may even make the situation worse. A family and marriage counselor suggests, on the other hand, narcissists don't hold themselves accountable and are usually not able to provide empathy, so confronting them is just a setup for more pain. Wow. You agree with that? There you go. Yeah, I mean, I have this. This should be about friends, not parents. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I mean. Oh, my God. I have so many friends like that. Yeah. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Oh. And the harder it is, it's like the older you get and the more kind of set in your own ways, but also the more you know yourself and what you're willing to put up with. The hardest thing is then like still being friends with them. You know what I mean? Even on a social level, because you're like, I just don't even want to do it. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I talked about the list, the uh, list. Nazi before, you know, my friend. Right, right, That's the right. The right. Nazi. So she always, you know, every year she has this holiday party mm. and there's certain people she doesn't invite and certain people she doesn't invite. So, of course, this year I'm invited. I'm on the list. <laughs> so I didn't even really feel like going, but this other friend of mine called and she said, you know, if we don't go, everybody's going to think that we weren't on the list. And I said, oh my God, that's the pettiest thing I've ever heard, but I'm here for it because <laughs> I never get to do real I'm petty down. shit. So let's do it. <laughs> we'll go to show up. So let's look really good and let's go and have a good time. So I go and, you know, I I see everybody and I see this friend who's a good friend and you all know who she is. She's on TV. Ooh. Okay. And she, um, she's there, but we're not speaking to each other at the time being. Okay. Okay? Got it. Um, she exemplifies everything that you just laid out here. Love it. Let me run something by you. Okay. Run it by us. Run it by us. Run it by us. By the listeners and see what they think. Yeah, please. Okay. So... She asked me, her son wants to become a model. All okay. Right? She asked me to plan a photo shoot for her son. I know exactly. Okay, you yes. Know who I'm I, know, about. I know exactly who all you're right. talking about. So I did. This was like on a Friday. <clears throat> the photo shoot was the following week. I got the phot- photographer, the makeup, the hair, booked the venue, the whole bit. Monday, she's supposed to confirm with me. Hey, is everything confirmed? Oh, the production of my show has to let me know and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Tuesday. Well, everybody was on hold. People took off work. You know, you confirmed. Oh, like I said, as soon as they let me know, I'll let you know. I'm like, okay, bitch, calm that tone. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm doing you a favor. Watch yourself. Watch Put yourself. some respect on my name. Because <laughs> I can see this shit's going left. I'm Paul motherfucking I'm Paul Ward. motherfucking Ward. Here's another t-shirt. Right. So Wednesday comes and nothing from her by 12 noon. I release everybody from the shoot on Thursday. Okay. Still nothing from her Wednesday night, nothing from her Thursday, nothing from her Friday. Two weeks later, three weeks later, I see on her Facebook, on her Instagram, that she's got a picture of her son in his model photo shoot. Never came back to me, never followed up on all those people I booked, <gasps> never said another word about it. Oh, my God. So she was planning a whole other shoot basically without well, you. Well, she did it after that. Damn. She did it after that, but she never circled back. Oh. You know? So one day she decides to send me a text message saying, you know... Um, I got a bone to pick with you. I'm really mad that you included these other ladies in, in something and you didn't include me. Actually, she was included because you know what I'm talking about. Actually, yes. This podcast. Yes. Okay. So I said, that's interesting that you have that bone to pick and you were on the podcast. And the other thing is, um, I have a bone to pick with you too. Please don't ever ask me to plan a photo shoot for your kid and then it dro- totally Drop never the bring it up again. I'm asking you to confirm, asking you to confirm. I've got the venue. I've got everybody in place. People took off work and you made it all about you never said anything again. And then I look up and you've done the photo shoot. What kind of shit is that? Why did she respond to that? Did she respond? Oh, well, I don't have these issues with any of my other friends. That's because they care you're on a fucking reality show and I don't. Right. Do you know what I mean? I knew you win. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? 
Like, listen. Do you think this friendship is over? Like, does oh, it come back? It's this over. This friendship is, is like on <laughs> serious life support. Like, when you're like, should we pull it? I don't know. <laughs> like, should, should we use There's the light no... switch or should we pull it out of the wall? <laughs> yep. It's like one of those things. But I'll tell you something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, That's how you, an awesome how analogy. you turn this thing off? Oh my God. Um, but I will share something else. She was at the party on Saturday night. We've had a, a, another incident. You know what? Well, that's oversharing, so I won't. I won't get into that. Oh, I kind of want to know. <laughs> Do you want to know? Yes. Okay, so that was the first issue with the kid. Okay, got it. The second issue is we were hosting an event together. It oh, was publicized yes. for months. It's a big fashion show. That's right, and she didn't show, right? She not only did she not show, she she ended up being in another country. She never told me she was going. I asked her if she needed glam. She says, oh, I'm, I'll be coming from another event, but I'm in this other country. And <laughs> I said, okay, you'll be back on time, of course. You know, three hours before we were supposed to be there getting hair and makeup, she said, um, oh, I missed my flight. I had an allergic reaction. My eye is swollen. This happened. That happened. She had every Police. excuse in the book. She said everything but I'm sorry. Oh, everything under the motherfucking sun. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the one thing you left out in all these ex- explanations. She does not. Okay, just knowing this person briefly, and I know that her very briefly through you, mm-hmm. she doesn't seem like an apology gal. Like she just. It, oh no, that thing you just read. All the victim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I see her at this party. Yeah, you can tell. Of course, I'm not speaking to her. Right. Do you right. know? Right. And I hate to do that with with anybody but definitely with women I don't want to make anybody feel bad as much as you wrong me I like to do that fake Hollywood shit sure. when you know you wrong me hey girl girl, what's up? girl child let me go over here to this bar girl see what's going on you know I make my way to the bar bye and they just don't I, I don't holler to, at them anymore why, yeah exactly why make a fuss but these last two incidents were like what kind of friend would do that so I decided to just ice her ass so now when I see her I don't say anything mm. Got it. But it was a very uncomfortable situation. I can tell for her, uh, there was another person that wasn't speaking to her as well. And it just, I don't want to get involved in grown people mean shit. Right, right. Yes. You're way too beyond that. But you know, you know what, what I, mean? I would like her to do in terms of taking responsibility is I really would like her to apologize. Because I think that I'm due an apology really for both of those things. But for mo- most recently for that last thing where she committed months before I said she'd be a part of this event. <clears throat> These people put her name up in posters and in the brochure, and everybody was looking forward to her. I had to get a last-minute replacement, and she knew all along she wasn't coming. <sighs> Yikes. I do think that one, but I think you're going to be holding your breath for yeah. that apology. Don't you? But I, don't I want think... the apology just so I can get back to a place of treating her with at least a level of respect that any that is due to anybody i don't really like to walk past people like i don't know them well you'll probably honestly you'll probably get it because look at you and amorosa yeah. you guys completely you're back on track yeah sort of. <laughs> i mean i don't know if i'd say that, or that but. kind of kind of you know. right the love is always there but until you know that administration changes i'm not really there for any of that i know oh yeah. my god it's such a mess i mean yeah. seriously we'll talk when we're old when we both have gray hair like when i let my grays come in <laughs> Do you know what, what I mean? age will that be? I don't know. 80. Like, that's going to be a long time. <laughs> it might be cute, though. You know? I, no. Never. No, you are no, not, not going to do happen. gray until you're like, you can't get to the barber shop. Right. Or like to the salon. Like, you can't. I don't go now. They come to me. <laughs> okay. You're never going gray. That's <laughs> like it. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, you guys. Well, look, you always need to be following us on social media. Uh, I'm on social media at HeyFrage on Twitter, on Instagram. Paul? Yeah, I'm Paul Wharton on Twitter and Paul Wharton Style on Instagram. Instagram and email us. Email us yeah. always. Paul Wharton style at Yahoo. And I'm Sarah at HeyFrage.com. You guys, we love you. Thank you we so much. We love you guys. Thank you for allowing us to overshare and tell all your friends about the oversharing. Yes, share <laughs> the Hey Frage podcast with Paul Wharton. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Peace. With the most Paul Wharton looking fleek. Take it from me, you should be listening. Live from the nation's map, pop culture at its best. No need a second guess, separated from the rest. Entertaining nonetheless, many topics to address.